Hi everybody and thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about seams, their functions and how to classify them. So what is a seam? Well, a seam is a way to attach multiple plies of material together or to embellish uh, material or finish an edge. So why do we have different types of seams? And it, it's as simple as the world of sewn products is huge and includes all sorts of different items. Products may require different styles of joining or embellishment or edge finishing and uh, certain products like an upholstered chair is going to be assembled differently than a pair of canvas pants. The best style of seaming on one item may not always be the preferred method for another. There's six different types of seams. There's superimposed seams, lapped seams, bound seams, flat seams, edge finishing seams, and ornamental stitching seams. The first superimposed or SS seam uh, is when two or more plies are joined together with one or more rows of stitching and generally the edges are even, like so. Uh, lap seams are also very common and an LS or lap seam takes two or more plies of material and they join them together generally overlapping at the needle. So if you imagine the needle is in the middle of my two hands here you'd have an overlapped seam. Uh, a common type of overlapped seam for garment production is a felled lap seam, which you may see on the inseam or outseam of a pair of pants. Bound seams, uh, or a BS seam, uh, is produced by folding a piece of material like a bias tape around the edge of one or more plies of material. This may be commonly seen on shoe and boot tongues, for example. An FS flat seam, also known as a butt seam, is produced by butting two or more plies of material together, but not overlapped, like so. Uh, this is really commonly found on active wear or athletic apparel. Uh, where items need to have a lot of stretch or give. An EF or edge finishing seam uh, is often produced on a single ply of material by either folding the material over itself or covering with a stitch. So for example, uh, emblem edging is a type of EF edge finishing seam. And last but not least is the ornamental stitch, or ornamental seam. Uh, decorative stitching on a single ply of material, uh, for example, a chain stitch embroidery would be considered an ornamental seam. Uh, you could also think of the hem stitch on an embellished table runner, really common old cool antique thing that you see around. So here's a quick guide on how you can understand how to read and write seam designations. So I'm going to use as an example a three needle felled overlap seam like you would see on a pair of jeans. So the first code is going to be the stitch type. In a previous video you may remember that we went over these federal stitch class designations. So your single needle, two thread, double lock chain stitch is going to be a 401 type stitch. The second code that you see here is going to be the seam type. So we've got our seam designations. Here you can see that these are all different types of LS or lap stitch. So in this case, we're actually going to be using an LSC, or the C subclass of the LS code. 
And then the third number in our serial here is the number of rows of stitching. So if you combine the 401 double lock chain stitch with a lap seam C, and you do it three times, you're going to have uh, what is commonly seen on the inseam or outseam of a pair of jeans. Now another important question is what function does a coded seam index serve? And a seam code index helps to regulate and standardize manufacturing practices across an entire industry. Let's say, for example, you're a fashion designer and you're working with multiple manufacturers to produce a line of clothing. If you can communicate your technical data to each of your separate manufacturers in an organized and standardized way, you're likely to get an identical product from each of the different facilities. It's just like following a recipe in a cookbook or a blueprint to build a home. Another neat thing that we can think about with seam designations is how they work in conjunction with different types of sewing machine attachments and folders. So, for example, you, you can create a felled lap seam by hand, but it's a lot easier and faster to use a folder like this that actually takes the two pieces of material, let's see if I can do this, and as it goes through the machine, creates that joined lap seam. And so, not only can you communicate that lap seam data to the factory that's going to produce your item for you, but if the factory needs to have some lap seam folders made, they can go to a place, you know, a, an attachment distributor or producer and look through their books and see, you know, is this, the, that's not the right seam. Let's see here. Uh, nope, that's, that's not, no, nah, here, you know, and they'll just go through and find, okay, here we go. This is the, the folder that I need. The designer has then communicated to the manufacturer the technical data, and the manufacturer can go to one of their support industries, like an attachment manufacturer, and communicate the same data. So you actually have this uh, interesting triangle of three different people all speaking the same language to make a standardized product. It's really cool. So I hope that this information is helpful or at least interesting to you. Uh, my goal with this video is to set you up with some foundational understanding of sewn products uh, because I'd like to make some more videos about things like attachments and the you know nomenclature and technical data. So I think that this will probably set us up for a good jumping off point to you know maybe go through this book a little bit more and see what all the interesting bits and pieces are out there to help you with your manufacturing.